Hello and welcome to the Faith Club Podcast by Faith World TV with me, Mary Alison Momo, where we'll be having engaging, inspiring, insightful, captivating and thought-provoking conversations with leading figures from all walks of life. So tune in weekly for your dose of inspiration. Stay tuned. I am just so honored, 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 honored to have a wonderful guest with us. I hope you are okay wherever you're watching us from, Faith World TV podcast. Hallelujah. Mm. So introducing my guest, I'll just get right to it. Apostle Grace, Apostle Grace Lubega from Uganda. Wonderful to have you on our podcast today. How are you? Very well, thank you. And it's a blessed opportunity to be hosted by you, Mary. Thank you for having us. Awesome, Apostle. So it's just such an honor to have you. So just for our viewers or our listeners who don't know who you are, could you just briefly introduce yourself? Well, uh, born and bred in Kampala, um, received the Lordship of Jesus Christ when I was eight years, uh, went through school and um, had an encounter in university that affirmed the call of God upon my life. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, I said yes, which is a hard one for me, mm. because um, if you were to write the 100 things I could have done on the earth, mm. preaching sh could, I mean, would not be among them. I didn't admire it. I, I, it was not something that I would aspire to do. But I said yes to God. Mm. And uh, the rest is history. It's been a journey of learning and unlearning. It's been a journey of a thousand deaths. It's been a journey of sacrifice. It's been a journey of, you know, falling and, and, and standing up, you know, restoration. It's been a journey of experiences and encounters with God. Mm -hmm. um, all I can say is, like Paul says in, the, in Scripture, that I, I, I bless the Lord who counted me worthy, you know, mm -hmm. who counted me worthy, you know, to be called a minister of the gospel. And that's uh, a mark and a badge I carry with so much honor and humility and receive, even with the persecutions that come with it. Yes. <laughs> I, I, I have no regret. If if I had a, anything uh, or another opportunity in life to, to do this, I would, I would still come back to do that. Awesome. And I'm glad. I'm glad that that's, the, that's your conviction. Mm -hmm. You said earlier that um, it was never on your plans, mm -hmm. you know, to be a man of God, mm -hmm. to be a preacher. So when did you receive the call? I, I think, um, uh, well, when I was eight, I think I had a, an encounter that I, that opened me up to the spirit realm. Mm -hmm. I, I never understood the spirit realm and the realities thereof, but I remember when a crusade ground as this wonderful preacher is uh, inviting people for salvation, and uh, I have my first vision of Jesus Christ. Yeah. So I'm eight, I can see him, and I think the friends that are standing with me actually can see him. So I touch them and tell them, look, he's there, and, and nobody could see him. Mm -hmm. But it's something so amazingly defining uh, in vision when you see the Christ, that when you see him, you know he's the one. Absolutely. You know, it's it's not the name, it's it's more than that. It's the glory that, that comes with that appearance. Mm -hmm. And so I'm awakened spiritually since I was a child. But that, well, that's all I knew. So then the prophetic switches on, I could see in the spirit, I could walk in the spirit, I could tell many things, I could tell the future. Well, I thought that was it. I'm just going to have my wonderful walk with God and, you know, do myself a good job and like everybody else. And then, you know, march through life and go to heaven. Mm -hmm. University time is when I think we're going at a prayer mountain once with friends of mine to pray. We used to go on the mountain quite a lot to pray. Mm -hmm. And oh, I had an experience. I was carried for about three hours, you know, in the spirit. And then when I return in my body, I can't move. I can't, I can't do so much. The power and anointing of God was all over me. That whole evening I was shaking. The next day I was shaking. I sober up fully on the third day. It was during that experience that the Lord started to really explain to me and started to define the milestones and, and the mark of my ministry. And then he gave me the choice, mm. you know, cause our God is, is not a pushing God. Yeah. He's a leading God. Yes. He, 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 you know, will give you the opportunity and invite and you can say yes or no. And I know many people who were heavily called by God, but they said, no, mm. so, some people can't say no, you can say no. Mm -hmm. That's why in the Bible we have permissible will and perfect will, Absolutely. you know, both carry blessing, mm -hmm. but the perfect one carries the most 
blessing because it defines your purpose and existence on the earth. It fills the void that I feel many people are trying to fill with alcohol and drugs mm -hmm. and many of these things. So yes, it's that time when, you know, I, I, I say yes to God. Absolutely. And I'm just so glad that you said yes, because mm -hmm. the results that we see with your ministry mm -hmm. globally, mm -hmm. globally, I mean, your ministry transcends Uganda, Kampala, yeah. Uganda. Yeah. And even in Uganda, you're sitting out stadium. Yeah. Stadiums. Yeah. Are you surprised? Are you surprised with what God has done with you or and is doing with you? You you never lose the wonder. Yes. You never lose the wonder. Because um there are things you can never ascribe to your ability and potential. I cannot tell you how many times I've sat alone in the house and wept mm -hmm. when I saw some things, some miracles and well when you're there, you can't show it. Mm -hmm. And I'm not surprised that God is working. Mm -hmm. I know that God works, mm -hmm. but it's a wonder that he used me. You know, mm -hmm. it's a wonder that he called me. It's mm -hmm. a wonder for me to see the things that I only read in books like God's Generals and the things I read in the Bible and they're coming alive. It's, he's true. He's alive. Mm -hmm. Just to know that, you know, there's more to life than what the world can give. That I never lose the wonder. Mm -hmm. That's why when I see a miracle, I become like a child. Mm -hmm. Every time I see it, like, I, it just never ceases. And I, and I think as long as I'm alive, I'll always be amazed. Amen. I'll always be amazed. It's it's the wisdom behind how he does miracles. Mm -hmm. It's not just a miracle. Mm -hmm. It's the wisdom behind what he does and the instructions, the revelational insights that come through every work of God. I always tell people when I'm teaching that when Jesus did miracles, every miracle that the Christ did came with an instruction. It Absolutely. came with, 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 with a purpose that went beyond that miracle. Mm -hmm. And it's through, you know, receiving, gleaning from that experience to see the person of God and, and behold him in the light like you've never seen him before, beyond just the miracle. Yeah. Your eye is able to see. And and, and, and and when your eye sees that, there's just something it does to you. It mm. never leaves you the same mm. because the more you know him, the more you become like him. Like him, absolutely. So let's go back to the name of your ministry, mm. Fanero. The first day I heard of, of that I heard the name Fanero, I said, what does it mean? Mm. What does it mean? So can you tell us what Fanero means? Yeah. Now, now Fanero comes from the Greek word meaning to make manifest. Make manifest. In, in the sense and heart of this conviction that we are believing in God, we believe in what he's able to do. What then is the wisdom to manifest or bring forth or express in the physical realm whatever our convictions are. Mm -hmm. And that from our character, you know, to our, you know, relationship or intimacy that we have with God to uh, the signs, the miracles, the power of God that must be demonstrated because we believe in a God who is alive. Mm. I think that was the heart of us, uh, of, 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 of Fanero. Again, it comes from a place where we, I think, by by God's own conviction, I, I I just got tired of, you know, preaching a God that can't be seen. Absolutely. You understand? Just preaching a God that cannot, you know, I cannot touch, feel, test. Mm. John says that which we have touched, seen, handled concerning mm. the word of life I preach mm. to you. Mm. And so we get this bunch of kids and say, can we seek God mm. just to see him? Mm. Just to see him. Mm. And I think that's what uh, uh, David says when he says one thing that I long for is that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life to be old yeah. he says to see his beauty mm -hmm. and to inquire in his courts mm -hmm. can i see a god uh, this god i preach about and can he be manifested in, in, in my life that's that's really the heart and spirit of that in every aspect it should go beyond just what i do on the altar yeah the business person the engineer mm -hmm. operating somewhere in, a, in a, an airline company the doctor operating somewhere in a, in a hospital and that nurse somewhere or a janitor in a hotel they have to be able to extend that life so let's go back to the very beginning. So you receive the call, mm -hmm. you go on the prayer mountain, you have this encounter with the Lord mm -hmm. three days and the Lord is, is ministering to you mm -hmm. and showing you your principles, the direction of your ministry. What did you do next? Well, like all people, you are quick to say, well, let me just put my hand on the plow immediately. Mm -hmm. And uh, in in part, it, it, it was 
not what I was expected of to do, but there was a zeal in mm. me burning to see God. Mm -hmm. um, and it's okay if you are simply exercising uh, yourself in matters that are within the ambits of the grace and realm where God has introduced you. Mm -hmm. But sometimes that excitement can come, uh, push you to a place of exercising, like David says, yourself in matters higher than you. Mm -hmm. And your heart is haughty. Why? Mm -hmm. Because the gift is, is functional. Mm -hmm. And so you confuse the gift with, with the mandate or the assignment. So you could actually go out uh, without getting the full counsel of the assignment. Mm -hmm. And I believe, um, I think during that time, I, yes, we went out preaching and, and I believe I could preach and minister within the measure, like Paul says, we reach you by the rule of the measure that mm. Christ has given us. But there are times I feel I used to exercise myself beyond that rule. And I found myself probably doing things that my training and preparation were not ready for. And then so I started a church for three years. It, you know, it's it thrived, but predictable. Mm -hmm. And so I get to a point where I I, I just uh, I'm just frustrated. My potential is 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 is, is in question. I'm burned out because mm -hmm. I'm not seeing what I must see. Well, outside here, people are like, "Oh, well, that's a good ministry. We we were seeing progress." Yeah. But it wasn't quite what I felt or saw spiritually because there's a difference between what God has placed in the inside of you and what you're able to give. Mm -hmm. and some people easily get so satisfied with what they are able to give mm -hmm. because they have no other reference or bearing of, yeah. of, 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 of reference to to tell or probably they're not awakened enough to know how much they could do because there's a difference between what you are able and what you could do. That was my experience. Mm -hmm. And so, yes, I, at one particular point, Jesus comes through again, <laughs> gives me this encounter. That <laughs> forced his me, work. Yeah, yeah, that forced me to say, you know, first pull back. Mm -hmm. And we know we had bought quite a lot and I just handed over, sent everything over to this wonderful couple that had been serving God for 15 years and I went back to the grass, I washed toilets, slashed compounds. What <laughs> did I do? <laughs> I served as a yeah. servant in ministry okay. and, 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 it's, and I realized God cannot use unsubmitted power. Mm. There's always a pattern here that will require you to serve first before you are served. The Bible says if any of you requires to be the greatest among you, he must be another man's minister. And if any of you require to be chief, you must be another man's servant. Mm -hmm. You know, there's, there's things God will show a prophet and there's things God will show his servant, the prophet. Yeah. And, 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 and I received oracles within the office of the prophet, but I never used to receive the oracles within the office of the servant prophet, the servant apostle. So that, that breaking, that pruning, that churning of the milk, that you go through death. And I tell people, it's, it's you go through so much death, you lose yourself. Mm -hmm. you, you, lose your, you, you, you lose your credibilities, mm -hmm. you, you lose your acuities, you, look, you lose your, your, your qualifications, you lose your name, you lose your person. Mm -hmm. And then you're sucked into something bigger than you. You die, literally, yes. you yes. die. <laughs> That's so, so yeah, so it took me about 10 years and God, I in there started to teach me things no man has ever taught me. I can't tell you I learned this in a book or mm -hmm. that is a textbook. But he started to show me the principles of ministry. 2013, he comes through a vision, then tells me now you're ready. Uh, but again, from that readiness, the readiness took another month, a couple of months, probably eight or nine or so. And it was uh, the August 2014, 70 says, now you are now start. Mm -hmm. So... And when we started, 1,200 people appeared from, you know, I cannot explain. And it wow. kept growing. growing. We have done, you know, the maths in ministry and statistically we're growing at least 100 members every week. Oh it just God. didn't stop to grow. So you are in this place where you're streaming between 12 to 15,000 people on Thursday. And yeah. then you're doing 600 locations life and some are sitting 3,000 some are sitting 2,000 1,000 a few of them of course are sitting 20 or 30 mm -hmm. and growing yeah but wow god, <laughs> god. So that's it's it's crazy <laughs> it's crazy but we thank god so much mm -hmm. your ministry is characterized with the word the mm -hmm. word of god mm -hmm. worship but before we get to actually worship, but the word, I sit there watching you mm. and I'm even sometimes listening to you um, while I'm doing my chores because obviously I'm a busy mom. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and the scripture that you started with at the beginning, 
and where you've ended, <laughs> there are times when I've sat down to write notes mm. and my God, I can't even write fast enough. Mm. The words are just flowing out of you. It's like a river. Mm. How did you get to this place? <laughs> Very powerful question. Very, very powerful question. I wish I wish many of the spiritual people listening to this could actually get to really what this means. You see, um, the experience of the Spirit mm. is a walk with God. Okay? Mm. And like I said, you only take people where you have been. But you see, when you are studying the way of 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 patterns again the patterns that regard uh, divine oracles mm -hmm. you in your own mind can never understand everything in one lifetime mm. you understand mm -hmm. but there is a journey um, that the spirit of God can take you mm. okay like the prophet says in the Old Testament he says and the angel of the Lord took me who is this angel of the Lord yes you know. He's in the person of the Holy Spirit. Mm. He says primarily in the New Testament dispensation, he shall teach you all things and remind you that which you have forgotten. Mm. So I had an experience years ago where, you know, he held my hand and said, I'm going to take you to the end of all things. Mm. Uh, when the Bible says in Psalms that I have been to the end of all perfection, but the word of God was broader. Yes. What then broadens this word in a man's spirit? God has to take you to the end of all perfection and show you the full counsel and when you receive that full counsel it's like you've said you have drunk from rivers mm. it's 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 many rivers mm. it's like your spirit is plugged to this endless flow and how do i know that i can separate my personal uh, fellowship with god and the things that i'm able to learn through that with what happens when i'm on that altar mm. When I stand on that altar, certain things start coming through. Now I understand and respect the place of unction. Yes. The Bible says you have an unction from on high. Mm -hmm. What does the next line say? You know all, all things. You yeah. don't know a few. When the man is, is ministering under the unction, they have the full counsel. Mm -hmm. Many people claim to function under unction, but I'm sorry to say many of them are speaking from a place of... Uh, uh, no, it's not. The, it's not that place. Let me just say it's not the place it's that they claim to. I, I know a few who are actually speaking from unction. I've met a few ministers mm. uh, that that I I know some alive and some who are gone. You know the greats who who really reach that place. It's a very very beautiful place. When mm. a man gets there, oh my God, the word of God is broad. Mm. You know, and the next thing you know is every time you open your mouth or your spirit. You, you just feel this coming out of you, your land. You yes. know? The Bible says the Lord has given the tongue of the land. He says to know how to speak a word to him that is weary. Do you realize the Bible doesn't say to know what to speak? Because mm -hmm. you're not in the place of saying, oh, what will I speak? No, mm -hmm. it's really how will you speak? Because you already have the counsel in your spirit. You have the understanding. It's always whenever you're given the opportunity, how will you minister to him that is weary and the bible says it opens my ears mm -hmm. to hear as one which is learned mm -hmm. when you learn spirit god simply makes one sentence and you can deduce books out of that yes the bible says the scriptures first thing that god would justify the gentiles through faith he went afore and preached this message to abraham saying in thee shall all nations be blessed seven words and abraham received the whole new testament the whole new testament so it's a place. So <laughs> God, don't stop on my on my account. Yeah. Um, what is your day to day like? You're a busy pastor, mm -hmm. an apostle, mm -hmm. meaning you're planting churches. You mm -hmm. oversee churches globally. Mm -hmm. You're also married and a businessman as well. A businessman, yeah. a father. Mm -hmm. I just had I actually have a, a little little girl, one, yeah. little one yeah. and another on the way. Yeah. Oh, we bless them. How do you? Where, where do you find the time to have that intimacy with God? Because it has to be maintained. You have to maintain your personal altar. Like mm. you said, you can't take people where you haven't been. So there's that sometimes when after you have received the, the, the mind of Christ, the full counsel of God, like you said, mm -hmm. sometimes you may be able to, I mean, some people do neglect that mm -hmm. personal mm -hmm. altar mm -hmm. because they're getting very busy. Mm -hmm. invitations everywhere yeah you know looking after the saints looking after the churches the how, where do you how do you maintain mm -hmm. that personal relationship with god in spite of all with the distractions here 
And by the way, Mary, that's a very important thing mm. that you can become so busy mm -hmm. with men that you can lose that that place. It's actually so easy to lose it. Yeah. In my primal years, I went through that primal years of ministry. I went through spaces where the gift would flow. Mm. You know, but the authority that comes from that presence, I felt was always disturbed. Mm. So I, I, I understand what you're saying. I think, again, like you've said, to, to consistency is everything. Mm. And you cannot have consistency if you are not disciplined, mm. you know. Uh, you cannot be disciplined if you don't design, you know, a deliberate system to prioritize your life. Because if you can't systematize or if you can't draw a structure around your life, then you can't integrate. Mm. Things cannot reconcile. Mm -hmm. You'll have a few things reconciling and a few broken parts that you can't put together because there's no there's no integration there's no system and and but it begins from that simple word priority mm -hmm. and the discipline to prioritize you know um for me my every day of my life christ or god has to come first as of whether that's early in the morning we hours of two or four or five or six it doesn't matter where mm -hmm. it has to be there has to be a definitive time where he has that priority and the discipline of daily communing Absolutely. yeah daily communion it's mm -hmm. not something oh today i'm tired tomorrow i won't mm -hmm. uh, again sometimes it's because we complicate communion mm -hmm. you know we, compl we complicate that relationship many people actually don't know how to pray mm -hmm. they are borrowing that from you know religious patterns and, mm -hmm. and fallen oracles mm -hmm. the, the the place of prayer and relationship and communion with god has to be very defined and it has to be defined in a place of rest. Mm -hmm. It has to be in a place of, of understanding. You must really have a certain understanding and knowledge of God. You must be able to read his heart. When you do, intimacy becomes a very beautiful thing. In fact, for me, when I become so intimate with God, somebody has to call me out of that. Mm -hmm. It's not something that I can easily come out of. of course. But once, once, if that intimacy is not that, prayer would be something you'd want to finish. Yeah, it's like, yeah, it's labor, it's a chore. Yet you could sit through a very nice movie and get taken mm. you know you lose yourself through a season on netflix and you know you're watching the first second third and the next thing you know season eight even and the whole when thing is the gone. next one coming out yeah so if you can have that you know with 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 with, with the world mm. uh, you know imagine you had that and more actually with god i think for me that's that's a place that i find mm. i start my day with that every day Man. If I don't have the opportunity to do that in the morning, I'll find somewhere in the day to do that. But I also learned something. Mm -hmm. When you study and master that world, you can actually be in your deepest communion, even in the busiest place. Absolutely. The people who know me know I can easily zone out zone there. Out. Yeah, I can just be there. And and and, and but I'm already, I'm, I'm I'm communing so deep in my spirit is an actually deep communion mm. so i started that when i was banking because i didn't know how to do that mm. and so my friends would be like but boy, this guy we're working the whole day mm. and after banking i go and get crippled bones mm. out and they're walking deaf ears are opening so that's how yeah. but it's fellowship it's intimacy it's prioritizing god and mm. disciplining yourself yes mm -hmm. I, I just so love what you've just said because it's one thing preaching the gospel, but I, for me, I want someone to tell me practically, mm -hmm. practically how to grow in the Lord, how mm -hmm. to walk with the Lord. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I was at your conference uh, this Saturday. Thank it you. It was Saturday gone. It was amazing. I'm so glad I made I made it to the conference because I nearly did not come because, you know, car trouble and everything, but I'm so glad that I was there. And it was such a beautiful conference, well-organized very um, courteous ushers, mm -hmm. thank God. <laughs> yeah. And then you you came in about three three p.m. You know, and the moment you walked in, I just felt the atmosphere change. It was so beautiful. You carry the glory of God, and then you spoke of so many things in the sermon, and it's a sermon that everyone should get. We'll put the link up. Thank you. Um, under the, this podcast, I, I thought for me, it's it's going back to the. It just summarizes. Our walk with the Lord. Mm -hmm. You talked about reconciling the word and the spirit. And the spirit. Mm. Could you, for that person who wasn't there, could you just briefly tell us yeah. about reconciling the word and the spirit? Thank you, Mary. In simplicity, um, the, the 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 spirit, the way of the spirit, is accentuated mm -hmm. uh, through spoken word. 
you know. The Bible says in the beginning the earth was without form and it was void and the spirit of the Lord was hovering over the earth. But there was nothing he could do mm. even though he was present. He could not simply interpret the thoughts of the Father. Mm. No, the Father had to speak and say, let there be. When that let there be comes through, the Spirit and the Word are reconciled. Mm. And when they are reconciled, creation takes place and, mm. you know, it's, uh, you know, things start shifting and agreeing and responding to construct what the Father has in vision and has already created by the Spirit. Mm. So the reality of that is the Bible says that the Spirit is truth. The person of the Holy Spirit is truth. Mm. He just doesn't speak the truth. He is mm. truth. truth. Mm. In essence, if I can connect to truth, then I am intimate with the person of the Holy Spirit. Why is that important? Because I was raised in a generation or a dispensation where it was easy to, you know, there's, there's anointings that are transferable. You mm. know, the Bible speaks of the anointing upon and the anointing within. The Old Testament folk really function under the anointing upon, upon. not within. Mm. The anointing upon us can do so much, mm. you know. Jesus said, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. He has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor, you know, to open uh, the eyes of the blind, you know, to set the captives free, to proclaim the, the hour of liberty, to set them that are bruised free. He can do so much without. Mm -hmm. But there's that anointing which is within, you know. And the Bible says that the anointing within you shall teach you. That's his primary responsibility. So we're raised in a dispensation in my earlier years of ministry where I found folk who were reaching out for the anointing without, but they never invested on the anointing within. Mm. And because they could not invest in the anointing within, um, you they could not keep a certain consistency. Yes, they sir. cannot be consistent in the things of God. Why? Because at the end of the day, um, when the anointing without is on a man, when you know you're functioning under the gifts, but they are not validated or vindicated by the authority that must come through your personal experience and intimacy with God, evidently it starts to show forth, it starts to uh, reveal itself through the inconsistencies that come in life. So what I think for me uh, has tamed me, and I is a message really that I was trying to give out to everybody who cares to listen, um, it's okay to have the gifts. Yeah. But we need the teacher, yes, the spirit of truth. Mm -hmm. And when the Lord told me something, I'm going to tell you a couple of years ago, he told me, by my gifts, you'll do so much mm -hmm. because my gifts will create room for you. Mm -hmm. But by my knowledge and truth, he says, you'll go beyond the room the gifts could create. You know, you, you'll build beyond the, the rooms or the spaces that your gifts will create. And by that, I will sustain and preserve what's on your life. Because you can't preserve a ministry by gifts. Mm. Nobody can. They've tried that. You They've can try that. It, but yeah. you can't, spiritually speaking, you can't run gifts for three years mm. it, 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 only. You can't function on three years only. Mm. There's something that will frustrate the way and flow of your spirit. Um, there was a necessity for us to learn to reconcile you know, what you are taught by the person of the Holy Spirit. Let me tell you some Mary. Mm -hmm. The anointing that the gift can give is different from the anointing that understanding comes with. Mm. The authority of the gift is different from the authority that comes with a man or woman who has learned how to tarry in, in the, the word. Yeah, in the word, yeah. In truth. Mm. When you reconcile those two things, it's amazing the things you can move. Mm. We cannot speak revival mm. if we are only speaking of the gifts. Mm. It's not enough to say it's revival because people are getting healed. Mm. Whatever God is doing without has to be reconciled with what God is doing in the individual within. Yeah. Because then I need my character tamed. Mm. I need my understanding tamed. Mm. I need my life arrested and aligned to the will and purposes of God. And that only the Holy Spirit within can do. Mm. So that, that was the heart of the conference and, and the, the spirit under which we came. That you will, it's the double-edgedness of the sword. When the Bible mm. says the word of God is a double-edged sword, mm. you cannot have a perfect balance spiritually when you can't reconcile the word and the, the spirit. spirit. 
So beautiful, Apostle. I could listen. Mm. I could listen to you all day. But also in that same conference, you told us we need to learn to love mm. the Word of God. Because mm. many times people read the Word. We read the Word. But it's the Logos that we're reading. Mm. And mm. it's not coming alive. Mm. It's not coming alive like how it comes alive mm. in you. Mm. You know, and somebody sits there transfixed. But mm. whatever you're, you're speaking to, to us mm. is giving us life. Mm -hmm. So for that person that wants Logos to transform into Rema and for mm -hmm. them to fall in love with the word, mm -hmm. how would you advise them? Well, good question. I think, let me begin from a place of understanding what the word of God is. Mm. Even to think that by this word, the worlds were formed. Everything that I see Mary was formed by this word. Mm. And to even think that I have been given the opportunity to have a relationship with this word as a person or in the person of Jesus mm. Christ. Mm. You see, that's something somebody must firstly conceive in their mind mm -hmm. to understand what that means. That you're not reading the Bible like you're reading a newspaper. Yeah. It's not information. It's mm. beyond information. Mm. He says the words that I speak to you, they are spirit and they are life. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the, uh, and, and I, I was sharing with uh, one of your staff just a couple of, 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 of minutes back. Mm -hmm. And I shared them uh, with them. Uh, if you look at the world and how it has been formed, mm. modern civilization or even ancient civilizations mm -hmm. can all draw their systems and structures through the foundations of the church. Yes. Whether you're talking of how our, our judiciaries are formed and how mm -hmm. our constitutions are written and mm -hmm. how our systems are running in mm -hmm. the world, whether you're talking of commerce, yes. uh, you'll be amazed to to learn that Calvin the fellow who begins the Geneva Academy mm. uh, in, in in back in the day is the very fellow the, the 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 university that then comes out of that are the very people that design the system of the Swiss Bank, wow. which has been one of the most robust systems for the last four hundred years as mm. we know it. Mm. The the the. Everything, literally, as we see in modern civilization, it carries its foundation through this word. The word of God. When you throw that away, <laughs> you're, you're breaking your societies, you're breaking your communities. It's what's happening across the yeah. world. Yeah. And, and I think already there's an emptiness, there's a destruction in the spirit realm in, in this nation, especially more than you have experienced in, 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 in Christian history. Mm -hmm. How does a kid at eight or nine years feel like they don't want to live anymore? Mm -hmm. And they put a rope through their neck. Mm -hmm. you can, I could say on and on about the things that we see and we ask ourselves, how did we get here? Because people don't have forgotten the power, mm. you know, of truth. They've mm -hmm. forgotten that reason and cultural advancements are not enough to frustrate that old message. It has kept us, this fund will take us far. So the person listening to me, I'll tell them, firstly, understand what the word is. That yeah. The word of God is not just information written in pages. It's actually in the person of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. And to know that by being intimate with this person, not only are you going to discover who you are, mm -hmm. not only are you going to have a definition of your identity as a child of God, but you'll find or discover your purpose on the earth. Mm -hmm. and, and, and to know that it's as easy as simply sitting in that word and, and learning to, fellowship with it as though it's God speaking to you. Yes. It changes your life. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Pastor Grace. You are a worship leader. Mm -hmm. You are a worshiper. Not even worship leader. You are a worshiper. And um, I've watched so many of your videos on YouTube yeah. where you just come on the, the altar. You've been invited to preach and then you start off by singing one song, two mm. songs, three songs, and mm. we're gone. Mm. <laughs> Is it is it something that you naturally do or you're led by the Spirit? Is it a freedom that you have in God or mm. is it your intimacy? Is it all these things? Okay. <laughs> I interestingly have a someone else preaching to one of our groups, our worship team groups. Yes, sir. And it's entitled, Worship Gave Me Everything. Uh, like I said. You made that message. Oh, yes, I'll share it with you, Mary. <laughs> 
uh, like I said, for me, I, I never looked at myself as a preacher. I never saw myself on the altar. I, you know, so I had dreams and visions when I was a kid. No, 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 not that. I dreamt anything, but not that. Mm -hmm. I wished anything, but not that. Mm -hmm. But then I discovered that I could sing, yeah. you know. And I thought, in fact, the first time I enter into a choir, I entered a Baptist church and I was a shy fellow. So like mm -hmm. I said, you know, I'll back up. Mm -hmm. You'll make me sing. I'll sit in the back and just give my tenor or soprano. <laughs> and I was okay with that. Yeah. I'm really somebody who never wanted the lights. I don't care for, 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 for the lights at all. But when I started worshiping, um, for me, well, it, that was the first place that gave me confidence. Mm -hmm. Because when I stand on that altar, I knew I could easily get lost in him. Mm -hmm. It was the place where I could literally escape myself. Yeah. And to escape yourself and know that the only place you'd, you'd, you can find, you know, definition would be in him. For me, worship was the place that took me there. So one of those days I am uh, worshiping. Uh, somebody asked me to lead worship, which I feared a lot. But anyway, I got the mic. <laughs> and as I worship, it, I started worshiping, demons started manifesting, yeah. you know, through people. Yeah. And, you know, they were throwing fits and they were rolling through mm -hmm. uh, the chairs. And, and, and people were like, what's happening here? One of those occasions, I was worshiping God and there was a girl with a short leg mm -hmm. in Entebbe. Mm -hmm. And that leg grew to the ground. Wow. People which were there actually stopped Mm -hmm. worshipping and they just stand and say screaming the service actually had to come to a halt mm -hmm. and, and and so it was the beginning so people were more interested to know talk to us about this God you meet in your worship yes. that's how I began teaching wow <laughs> wow yeah it was out of that yeah. talk to us about this God you see when you're worshipping mm -hmm. so when I started that because they used to see a lot of power in the worship that's mm -hmm. how then the transition comes through and I open the Bible and you know I'm speaking things even I can't repeat <laughs> <laughs> And then another person invites you, and then another person invites you, and, and the rest is, is yeah, it's history. It's beautiful, and we, we are continuously blessed, blessed, Humbled. blessed, blessed. Um, almost coming to an end of this, what are some of the highlights that you've experienced in your ministry? Uh, one, and most importantly, the salvation of the lost. Mm. I think for me, every time I see people coming, the saving knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, you know, in a month, we win between 1,700 to 2,000 people to mm -hmm. salvation in a month. With the exceptions of crusades that could win 10,000 yes. in, a, in a crusade season. I mean, mm -hmm. three days or so, we can win easily win seven to 8,000 in a crusade. Yeah. But uh, one, the salvation, and especially of the young people. Yes, the next especially generation. Especially of that next generation. Yes. I think for me that's a highlight that, you know, no, nothing uh, can come uh, next to. Uh, and then that then has come with an exponential growth that we cannot explain. Mm. We just realize no building now in my country can fit us. Mm. Not one building. Wow. And and the, the, the extension of that then is to meet people, even in the most least expected places. I go through airports and I go through places, even the people you least expect. <laughs> And they meet you and they know you. Yes. And I'm like, oh my God, how did this even person know me? So Thank God for the airwaves. Yeah, the airwaves, yeah. So it's a humbling, humbling thing. We've just made our ninth year. Yes. For me, it's the fulfillment of everything God spoke to us and things I spoke in the air. Yes. And we are seeing things we spoke when there was no lights, no cameras, no piano. And we still told these young 12, 13 in number mm -hmm. that something is going to happen one day that's mm -hmm. going to change this world mm -hmm. and 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 to see that and and you go in certain continents you could go to europe and not find that yeah. that humbles me mary so you know that breaks me and 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 the more i see him the more i humble mm -hmm. because i get to to see that's not me yes. it's just not <laughs> me it cannot be yeah. me no no yes. theology school can teach that yeah you know it's it's only the things god is doing and to see that, uh, but also lastly, because every day I see God new, mm -hmm. um, it has put me in a very vulnerable place mm -hmm. because it's unpredictable. Yeah. So I can't get used to the altar. So every time I get on an altar, whether I'm speaking to two or three or 20 or 20,000, 50,000 crusades, I'm going to an Asian nation that I won't mention uh, for security reasons. Mm -hmm. November, I'm doing 10,000 pastors. 10,000 pastors. And then some of them are 
pastors of 10,000 members, 15,000, 3,000, 30,000, and, and, and I have the opportunity to pour into that. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, every time I get on the pulpit, I'm here in the podcast, but I, I had to pray about this. Mm -hmm. It's new also. Mm -hmm. I go vulnerable. I don't know what I'm going to say or how I'm going to say that, but I see that the Spirit of God and is leading all the way, mm -hmm. and, and I just see myself follow. Yeah. It's beautiful because I can't, it's not predictable, mm -hmm. so it, it keeps me humble and broken and available to for God to to bring the new every day and for me to be able to give that and as long as that happens that's why I said I never lose the wonder yes. every day I'm like a kid who sees something new and I'm excited I just love your life sir and I just I know that all of us, that's what we aspire to, and we'll get there by the grace of God. So speaking of highlights, obviously we have um, top of a mountain, we also have valleys, and they're all part of life. Any challenges that you've experienced and how you've overcome? Oh my God, a lot. Yes. Persecutions mm. that come with, they come with so much mm. because they don't affect you all only. They affect your wife. They affect your children. If you're not married to a strong one, mm. it shakes a lot, you know, the, the, of, but we don't regret the persecutions. Mm. I'm, I'm not, I'm not crying over that. It's a badge of honor, mm -hmm. but you know, the, 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 sometimes also the pain that I've invested in this person for years and, and they're turning, they're mm. falling off, mm. you know, there's, they're falling off their way. It, 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 it breaks, it, it hurts. Of course, um, COVID was a challenge for the whole church, you know? Yeah. Um, so yes, the challenges have come sometimes the resources, are less than the speed at which the ministry is growing. Mm. And that's a good thing because it means God is doing something, but also it teaches you to learn to believe God. Mm. Because I, I'm not, we're not the kind of ministry that I don't talk about money. I'm not the kind who would say, oh, you give this or you do that. No, 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 mm. no, no. We are entirely reliant on God. You learn to rely on him for everything. So yes, the valleys are there and will be there. Mm -hmm. But... Um, I think the confidence that we have in this is that we didn't begin it. Yes. And he who began <laughs> the good work will see to accomplishment of the day of Christ. Exactly. Yeah. Thank you so much, Apostle Grace. But before you go, mm -hmm. let's pray for our listeners. Thank you. Heavenly Father, I pray for every man, woman, and child to whom this voice will get to. People who I believe by vibration and frequency are connecting to what I am speaking it might not be for all, but it's somebody who is listening to this podcast and they feel like something is shifting in their womb, a spiritual womb, like it did for Elizabeth when they met Mary. I pray for you that whatever God has deposited in the inside of you will come out for the world to see as God prepares us for the next move. In the end time, I pray that you'll be not only an active vessel, yeah, but a deliberately available one. Uh, to to fulfill what God is calling us to do in this hour. I pray for those who are sick, those who are going through uh, trying times in their households. I pray that may God perform a miracle in this very second. I thank you, Lord, because you have heard our prayer. Even for those who have not received the Lordship of Jesus and you're there, you can simply say this sentence and say, Father, I thank you for Jesus. And today... I make the choice to receive him as Lord and Savior of my life. Amen. If you've made that prayer, you are born again. Amen. God bless you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Apostle Grace Lubeka. It was such an honor, such an honor to speak with you on this podcast. Mm -hmm. I just wish you the you know beautiful time here in England, London, and we'll see you again. Appreciate very you. soon. Thank God you. bless you. Amen. Bye. Thank you so much, our listeners. Until next time, it's been Mary. Bye bye. Thank you for listening to the Faithful Podcast by Faithwell TV. Until next time, bye-bye.